The following video is intended for general audiences. It may contain coarse language, bad puns, suggestive images, and bad advice. It probably just contains retro computer crap. But don't try this at home, even if I tell you to. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and give this a shot. Um, so again, here's the cartridge. Um, this is my exploded TI. We got you know power supply, PS2 adapter, run into the keyboard, uh, motherboard, and CF card. Uh, monitor. Hopefully, you'll be able to see the monitor well enough. I could through the viewfinder earlier when I was testing it. So, I'm just going to insert the cartridge, kick this on, and it's a good sign. I should note it's still not perfect. I've I've had some randomness. Beautiful. Okay. So hopefully you can see multi cart. Um, looks like it's readable through the viewfinder. Um, and note that that's the only entry that shows up. I hit that. But uh, so TI Basic, Parsec, RXB, REA, EA Config Complete, GROM Config, Mr. Chin, and two music programs. Um, so I want to cover what's going on here. Um, so. Basically, the program that's in this uh, cartridge is 128k of ROM. The ROM contains the ROM side of Parsec, the ROM sides of RXB and REA, um, the, and these last four programs. Sorry, the GROM config is actually is fully loaded in GROM. So, Mr. Chin Music 1 and Music 2, are, these are all in GROM. They're not in the ROM. Um, you know what? I've forgotten. Some of them are in the ROM, some of them... Are in, anyway, they're copy... Pro these last four are, are editor assembler copy programs. They copy to RAM and then execute. Um, the rest of them are the actual raw cartridges, uh, with the exception of TI Basic. So the multi-cart is programmed to go ahead and scan all the GROMs. And just for fun, I included GROM0 because, you know, it's fun to find TI Basic. That's the only thing that's in there. So I should say GROMs 1 and 2. So anyway, so if I go ahead and hit TI Basic, TI Basic comes up and uh, you can see that it is in fact working fine but of course this is running out of the console this is not running off my cartridge so I'm gonna hit buy okay back over to here multi cart again and there we go we get our list so let's go ahead and we'll run Parsec Parsec is a complicated program because it contains both ROM and GROM um, and this cartridge is able to emulate both come on don't prove me wrong. So it's all working fine. I don't have the speech synth hooked up, sadly. So, you know, I'm also playing with one hand on the keyboard, and that's not helping, so I'm just going to... Okay. And quit. So you'll notice it still comes back to the multi-card, even though I made a valid selection. Um, so because we have GROM available to us now, we have the ability to run power-up routines. So there's a power-up routine in the GROM that goes ahead and resets the base address of the flash so that the right one comes up. So the multi-cart is actually running. Well, listen to the static. I'm going to go discharge that. There we go. The multi-cart is in fact running from the ROM side of the of the uh, of the flash. Okay. So this one this one's for you, Rich, because you've been wanting to see it for a while. RXB. And I can hit period and it'll switch to REA and back again that all works just fine any key spacebar to start um, I don't have a load program on here to demonstrate that it's working but I know that this is not a part of normal extended basic so this will work Ta -da! and we get a directory listing of my disk one um, I don't think I even have a disk two configured on my CF card I don't use it a lot let's see oh, hey, look at that a whole bunch of pictures that would be part of the slideshow I released way back in the day Okay, so there's stuff there, but anyway, um, there's no extended basic programs on there that I can load. Nevertheless, you can see that it's here. You can see that it's working. This is Rich Extended Basic 2012. That's interesting. It prints way over there. Is it supposed to do that? Print one. Oh, that's intriguing. Rich, is that a bug? Do you see where that two is showing up? This one. Oh, that's really weird. So it only happened after the call dir. I think it might be a bug. Anyhow, um, I'm going to leave that to you. That's not my concern. Bye. Back to the menu. Back to just the multi-cart. So you might be wondering with all these programs, why is just multi-cart showing up? Um, and the reason is that I hacked all the other headers not to be visible to the uh, TI BIOS. Um, the multi-cart is programmed that it can look for these slightly modified header tags and still display them for the exact purpose of being able to have a nice clean menu with just one entry.
no big deal. Um, EA Complete, I've demonstrated before. This is just an editor assembler cartridge with, that I've hacked to include the edit and, and uh, assemble files. So I can go into edit, edit, and it doesn't have to load anything from disk. No big deal. Back over here, back to multicart. Um, I'm going to do GROM config last. So, Mr. Chin, this is just copying from GROM or ROM, I can't remember which, uh, into RAM and then executing. So nothing special here. Pick a skill level. Um, I'm not going to get very far, I suspect. I'll play very quickly. Um, oh, scroll lock. There we go. Anyway, I mean, it's running from RAM now, so at this point there's no cartridge involved anyhow, so it's not really showing you anything. Good enough. Same deal, back to multi-cart. Again, I can run music files. You've already seen these. I hope. I just released them ages ago. Axle F conversion. And my Chuck Rock music conversion. So, you know, no big deal. It's all working. So we'll go back in here and I'm going to very briefly bring up GROM config. Now this is the tool, it's not 100% done yet, but it's getting close, um, that uh, is for configuring the Uber GROM and loading the, the slots, as I've controversially called them, uh, with the appropriate data that you want to load. So I can go into the viewer, we can say we want to look at, you know, 6, which represents 6,000. Um, and you can see it's part of the Parsec header. And I can uh, s scroll through all that very quickly. And uh, I can also switch bases. And you can see 9804 base, 9808 base, and it has all these different things configured. Um, so I have a document that describes it, yeah, complete, um, how the stuff is all laid out. Um, for the most part, I just put every uh, GROM program into a separate base for convenience's sake. Parsec was the only one that doesn't play nice, so it had to go at 9800, whereas the other ones I was able to move, and they seem to work fine. Um, of course, this has nothing to do with the actual ROM space. This is just GROM. And uh, the load and save are the parts that are not done yet, and that's what you'll need to be able to load data into the AVR. Um, F7 Advanced shows you the options that have created. So you can turn bases on and off. Um, if you turn bases off, then it acts like a cartridge with no select circuitry, and you know the GROM responds on all bases. Uh, recovery on off, I'll show you the recovery. Basically, if you hit spacebar while you power on the machine, recovery loads um, an editor assembler, EA5 loader, and easy bugs, so you can poke around and try to fix the problem. Rollover, this is something that we discussed on the forums, and uh, I don't strictly agree with it, but basically it says that if your address rolls past the point of one uh, physical GROM, it just continues on into the next. So um, at 7FFF in GROM space, on the TI GROM, the next address rolls back to 6,000, on most GROM simulators, it rolls up to 8,000. So turn that on and you'll get that behavior. And Flash Dev uh, enables the Flash device in the AVR because my AVR has a whole bunch of different devices like IO ports and the like. Um, if you have this disabled, it's not possible for your user programs to reprogram the AVR. You have to come back in here and change it again. Um, but that's, that's it, really. Um, demonstrates that it works. There's still a bit of, uh, you know, I thought maybe I had it because I reprogrammed everything and it came up first try. Then I set up this video and uh, couldn't get it to boot again. I took it all apart, put it back together. So, I don't know, there's still some kind of a, a uh, instability in there somewhere we've got to find. Um, it could be this crappy little bank switch thing, but it seems to be tied to the AVR. It seems to be tied to power. It works better when I have the CF device attached, which you can see might be leaching power into the system. I hope it's not. That's bad. I don't know for sure. I really don't know what's wrong, but it works. You can see that it works. The concepts are all there. All we got to do is solve this power problem. Should be good to go. Anyway, this is what I wanted to demonstrate at Chicago back in November. It didn't work there. Look, it's working now. <laughs> all right. Have a good one.